Good weekend, all. Ira Epstein of Linden Associates with your weekend edition of your financial market wrap-up. And this is for Friday, the 3rd of May, 2019. So we're about 318 in the afternoon central daylight time. And this will be where the settlement prices come in. Yes, the market reopens again at 330, trades to 4, but the settlement in many of the uh, financial markets is determined anywhere from right after actually 12.30 p.m. Central Daylight Time in the metals and uh, about 3.15 in the S&Ps. And there's other times in there. Don't ask me why. It's how it's done. So when looking at the market, you know, we heard all this news, market getting nervous, breaking down. You know, by the end of the week, we had recouped practically everything in most of the markets. Gold did have a nice rally today along with the silver. And it could be that the markets are also looking to see the Chinese trade deal because the Chinese delegation comes into town next week. We were there this week. And will something occur? It's been so long and so frustrating for many that they don't know how much of it's discounted in the market. People don't know that either. How the tariff phases will go in, don't know that. Don't, haven't heard anything on how do you solve a dispute. How does the tit for tat work? Because you don't have a third party arbitrator under what we're talking with. Then Mexico's arguing with the US, brightly so, saying they've done everything that was required of them. This is their perspective and probably correct. Why aren't we doing this deal? So maybe the Trump administration trying to wrap it all up and get a whole series of them at one time. The timing would be better right at election time, certainly, but take advantage of what you can get. Dollar sold off a bit. In fact, today you can see it sold off rather sharply from the day's highs. So let's take a look at the chart. And for the month, the word is the month so far, you're down one full point. That's not very much, right? The market's knocking on the door of the all-time highs on a monthly perspective. When we come to the weekly area chart, most people would not realize you're up six ticks for the week, six full points. I know I wasn't. You still have very much this influence of what's called an inverted head, shoulder, and shoulder. And that could carry this market further. We'll see what it does, but analysts talk about those things. When I come to a weekly bar chart, it's up and away. It's so much up and away that I'd, if I change the perspective, you can't tell how strong it is. I wanted you to be able to see that. And the pattern has been one that since Christmas Eve, the market made a bottom, and it's had a couple of breaks, very minor ones in them, and the markets continued moving on up and away. When you look at moving averages, this is the 18 week in red, the 100 week, and then the 200 week. They're lined up in a bolt sequence, short term, medium term, longer term, market moving up. What about potential resistance? Well, it could be the upper Bollinger Band, which on a weekly chart, you haven't hit since back in September of last year. Doesn't sound like that, right? You wouldn't feel it with making all-time highs. But that particular uh, algorithm is far away. The importance of it is when once you hit those numbers, you're hitting objectives. Doesn't mean you can't go higher. But the first time you hit it, I am certain I would say that's a target and the market ran to it and that's where some pros took something off the table. You're not there at this point. To break the pattern of higher lows, higher highs, you'd have to get back under 2789.50. And I think what you're going to find is this 18 week average is going to jump next week, probably very close and over that number. My guess is it'll be around the 27, 2800 level over that number. It's a guess because I haven't done the math, but you're going to lose these days, one of these back here and replace it with a higher one. And that should do the math job. In terms of momentum, it's bullish. On the weekly charts, I do not look for overbought, oversold. I use the uh, slow stochastics different. I'm just looking to see the direction of momentum. Otherwise, you'd say, ah, this market's going up, but it's oversold. It's got to pull back. It's not the way that I teach on the weekly chart. Momentum keeps pointing up. The trend is up. The bias is up. You're in a bull market. When you look at the NASDAQ, momentum up. Higher lows, higher highs, bullish. Unlike the S&P, you did hit recently, right through here, a couple of weeks, well, maybe two months back, the 18, you got to the upper Bollinger Band, you pulled back as I'd expect, and since then, you're trying to move up again. This week, if we take a look at last week's chart, your low was 76, 69, 75. 
This week's low was 76.82.25. So what you've got is basically an inside week. It's a pause. It doesn't mean that the trend is ending at this point. If you launch again, then the upper Bollinger Band, right now it's at 80.16. We'll see what it is Sunday night. That could come into play. When you come to the Dow, again, look at this. Think of this as a head, a shoulder, another shoulder, and this market's trying to move up and away. It won't take very much to get up and go for the all-time highs. The Bollinger Top resistance comes in right there at 27,324, big number. Momentum up, bias up, trend up. In the Russell, higher lows, higher highs. This one's playing catch up. It's got a ways to go to get to all time highs, unlike the other indices, but you've got everything on the table. You've got your momentum that's still bullish, higher lows, higher highs. You came out of that sideways action and you're pointing higher right now. In the VIX, you rallied into resistance of the combination of the 100 week average of closes in green and the 18. If you see last week, you were just approaching it. Now you went there. You took yourself out of a downtrend. Now what you've got is a lower low and a higher high. The settlement came in at uh, 1287. 1502 is the 18 week average of closes. So yeah, the market sold off from those highs. When you come to the 10 year notes, you're still in a longer term bull market, which means lower rates are still here. Higher lows, higher highs. Now, the market finished off lower for the week. The resistance is the upper Bollinger Band, which it's already hit. To get into this support area, the problem for the market is this. If you go down there, you're gonna create a pattern of lower highs, lower lows potentially. If that occurs and you closed under these numbers, you could be talking even to 120, 26, which would be higher interest rates. TLT, the pattern has been higher lows, higher highs. You have the one spike up to the upper Bollinger Band. And you know what I teach here, be it a daily chart, weekly chart. First time you hit it, it's often an area that I think pros take money off the table. You went through it even higher the next week and all of a sudden you're chasing yourself because the market came down. Now, if you were to take out, just like in the futures that you saw, last week's low, and that low is 122.11, to do that, you're gonna go right into these 18 and 100 day average, but if you close under them, you could start a fresh downtrend on the weekly charts. We haven't been in a position like that in a while. It hasn't occurred either, so don't read more than that into it. The first challenge again of the dollar index, again paid off for those that took money off the table. The market got up here, got as high in fact as 9808 and a half, 9773 was that Bollinger top and now you're back down to 9720. Support is back at the 18 week average of closes, but if you were to take out 95, what is that, 30, I think it's 95, 36 and a half, it is. 36 and a half, well, that would be under the 18 week, you could end this rally to the upside. In other words, you could end this up thrust the market has had. Hasn't happened. In the Euro, you're in a downtrend. You just hit last week your target, you're bouncing away, resistance the 18 week average. You'd have to get over 113.85 and a half in order to negate the downtrend. Got that? British pound, battleground, 18 week average. Basically three weeks in a row of hitting it. Market is now on the longer term charts, the weekly trying to rally. Is it gonna be able to get through the last rally high of 132.45? Right along with that is the 100 week average. So even if it does, I'm gonna look for some resistance right there. But it's so hard to trade the British pound because every day you wake up, it's like going through a major report with what the politics are on Brexit. In the Canadian dollar, you're still in a downtrend. You've got lower highs, lower lows, resistance, the 18 week average. You'd have to take out 75, 44 and a half to negate this pattern. It would not under this pattern turn the chart up. You'd end up with a lower and low, higher high. I would think the pros are gonna defend the 18 week average. Momentum still down, support around the 7408 level. Japanese yen, a lot's gonna happen this week because they're 
holiday. They have a, a one-week national holiday. That's now come to an end. They had a changing with the emperor, so there's another era that's begun. And we'll get a feel for what's going to happen as time goes on. We have two layers of resistance. Market is sitting here with higher lows, higher highs, but it has stayed now for a month and a half under the key 18-week average, which puts the bias down. You've got all kinds of divergence. You've got momentum turning up, bias down, the swing line up. Very difficult. Bitcoin, the weekly chart remains bullish. The market hits, gets over the upper Bollinger Band, pulls back to it. This is called riding that band. And it all came from right here, this very narrow area. When you get that and eventually break out, trends set themselves up. And this market is in an uptrend and it stays in one as far as I'm concerned on the weekly chart. Brent versus WTI crude, well, you're into an area of a bit of resistance. You're very close now with that 18-week uh, average of closes in red. You had a big down thrust, you've broken that. So put the market back in favor of the Brent for the time being. You can see how Brent got up last uh, week to the, eight, to the upper Bollinger Band and slipped right from it. Again, that's where I think pros, the first hit of it, they, they take some money off the table. WTI, same thing, got up here, it did it. Well, so what? I don't mind if you give up that, that little bit there. Now the question is, will this market find support on these breaks? A lot of people are saying, yeah, we've built all this crude supply this week. If you saw the EIA numbers, it was way bigger than anyone thought. But how much of that is due to maintenance turnover, other factors that come in as you're getting ready for the spring months and the summer driving? We'll find out. But a lot of people think that that's part of it. Rebob gasoline, a bit of a correction, but since December, this market's been out of tear. It was in the 120s. It's gone up nearly a dollar a gallon. That's rather substantial in the chart, overall chart, until you take out this low, 187.80, still in an uptrend. Heating oil, which are distillates, another way to call that, uh, never did get up to the upper Bollinger Band. It's a bit weaker than the other markets, but it's getting a bullish crossover. See how the 18-week has gotten over the red right through here? So what you're getting there, the 18-week is the red. The green is the 100-week. Uh, in theory, this is offering support and maybe a catalyst if it can get itself up and going for a challenge of the upper Bollinger Band. So that's pretty much how I'm reading these markets. Now, in the mornings, I do something very different. First, I get up early. I'm an early bird and I'm a late bird at the same time. Don't sleep all that much. But I wake up in 5, 5.15, I'm reading already, looking at what's going on in Europe and Asia, what are the markets doing, and looking at a cross eye just like that. But my goal is by 6.15 or so, that central time, I start recording so you can have a cup of coffee whenever you decide, and I'm going to review 40 charts. I'm going to do it in this exact sequence all the time. I am going to add, and that's what we're doing now, on the player that's on the bottom. So if you move around, it tells you if you're in currencies or whatever. It'll take us a few days to get it, but we'll get there. And this is what I do. I go through the chart, and it's a daily chart. I'm going to tell you the action I'm seeing, what I think the pros are doing in the market via that chart action. If there's anything that's fundamentally important that's come out so far, or a technical pattern, I'm going to mention it. And then I'm going to throw out a, a spit out a lot of trade ideas. You're, it's up to you to figure out what you want to do. Here's what I'm trying to be. I'm trying to be a sounding board. I'm, this is meant for somebody that's got some ideas or wants to learn and saying, gee, I'm thinking this, what is somebody that maybe I respect them? If you're watching my videos, I'm assuming you do. And you're saying, what is he seeing in the market? Yeah, I charge for it. Not exorbitant. Let, let's get serious here. For the first 30 days, because you want to try it, $7.95, about 26 cents, 26 and a half cents a day. After that, you make a decision. If you want to go 30 days at a time, it's not a month. It's 30 days at a time. It's $15. If you want to take one year at a time, it's $156, which is $13 a month. You figure out what you'd want to do. Anywhere you go, I'm not signing a contract. You want to get out at any 30-day period, fine. But if you buy the one year, you've got the one-year deal. How do you do this? Either call my staff, they'll work with you. You can do it all online. Just go to our website. You see it right here under 
market research or education, go to Ira's morning subscriber video. It tells you all about it. You sign up right then and there. You can even click here if you're watching me on YouTube. It'll take you to that page. I'm Ira Epstein. It's going to be an exciting time, especially with all these trade negotiations about to come to a head. You have a good weekend.